Thank you for taking the time today to have a look at the PAX Pulley Analysis Software by Advanced Conveyor Technologies. Uh, this is actually a two-part series. Uh, in the first video, I want to give an introduction, uh, general overview, and just kind of highlight some of the key features of PAX. In the second video, we're going to get into a lot more of the, the detailed analysis and FEA um, methodology used and that sort of thing. Uh, so what exactly is PAX? Uh, PAX is a full 3D finite element add-on for the Sidewinder conveyor design software. Uh, we've 100% uh, um, incorporated everything from pre-processing through t all the auto mesh generation, um, the full solver, a as well as all of the post-processing and uh, results. Uh, so who needs PAX and, and why do you need it? Uh, well, clearly pulley manufacturers and suppliers. Uh, it's going to provide you better designs, uh, longer life pulleys, higher quality pulley, thereby you know, saving you money and saving you time. And certainly we're aware that there, there's a lot of pulley manufacturers that, that have been doing uh, FEA f for a number of years. Uh, here at AC Tech, our engineers, we've been designing pulleys uh, for over 25 years using ANSYS. And, um, you know, ANSYS has worked very, very well for us. We developed a whole interface from Sidewinder that generated the, the, uh, the ANSYS input files, essentially. Um, and we, we thought about simply marketing that, that interface, but it really didn't make sense because the end users would then have to obviously go out and purchase ANSYS and not only just the standard version of ANSYS, you need uh, kind of the advanced and some, some, some additional tools that, that you need to do it in, in ANSYS. And pulley analysis itself, for anybody that's done it, it's, it's tough. Uh, there's a lot of steps involved. Um, there's a lot of things that you can get wrong and um, there's a lot of details that you really need to really need to understand to do it right. Um, so we looked at developing this as, as, as a way to really save time and, um, and to be able to easily do the analysis and be able to focus on the design itself and not so much having to understand the FEA tools and get rid of all those, those, um, those errors and um, little things that, that you can do wrong because um, as the end, end users or the, the manufacturers, you want to be able to use the tool and not have to worry about all, all the little things. And we've quickly discovered um, that we haven't totally abandoned ANSYS. Um, we still do an analysis every now and then, um, but we've just found that PAX is so easy to use and so flexible, and it just saves us so much time that it's just a, a, a great and awesome tool. But really our reason for developing PAX wasn't for the manufacturers and the suppliers out there, it was really for the end users. Uh, your, your conveyor design, um, designers uh, and the end users to be able to give you guys an unbelievably powerful tool and for in most cases you're going to be able to instantly do a better and more accurate pulley analysis than uh, most of the manufacturers out there in our opinion um, and it's going to give you the ability to do intelligent purchasing. You're going to be able to look at a design and, and really quantify that design very quickly and be able to compare design A to B to, to C and be able to make an intelligent decision on which design you want to use. Um, or as just a verification that you know these are going to be acceptable for the conveyors that, that you're designing. Um, so it's really an incredibly powerful tool that uh, hopefully is going to lower your risk uh, save you money, and obviously the ultimate goal is to, to prevent failures and, and downtime. And um, in today's world, there's there's still a lot of pulleys out there that, that are failing, and um, it's because of the design aspect and in a lot of cases. I mean, clearly there's all the other aspects of it from manufacturings and, and um, quality of materials and quality of welds and those sorts of things. Um, but certainly the things that we can control, we want to be able to control. Um, so let's just jump right into Sidewinder here and give a quick overview. So those of you that are familiar with the Sidewinder software, PAX is literally a little toolbar button that we've added on. Um, you can still use all of your standard uh, Sidewinder conveyor uh, files. This happens to just be um, a file that I, that I brought up here. Um, 
that's got, we'll just take a look at this as a dry pulley. This just happens to be an incline conveyor. Um, and it's got a single drive on it with an overhung load. I threw some stiffeners in just uh, just sort of so you could see the flexibility. Um, but all of the regular input window for your pulleys, you're still going to use this exact same thing as we're going to see in a second when we jump into packs. Um, so when I jump into packs, we essentially have four new windows up here, four uh, tabs. Uh, the first one is is literally just which pulley we're going to select. You know which take a pulley, dry pulley, whatever. You can select type 1 just to show type 1s, type 2s, types 3. Um, and again, for Sidewinder users, this will all be, um, you know, make sense to you. Um, but it's just kind of the general inputs. Uh, whether you're going to go with a 64-bit or 32-bit processor, um, how many cores you want to run at. So a pack supports up to a 16 cores, um, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, the Fourier series, the details of the, uh, you can analyze up to three different tension cases in packs and each one of those can have different design criteria. So you can have your T1 and T2 tensions as well as different overhung loads for each of those load cases. So that's just, just our first input page. The second is our geometry. And this is where we've really put a lot of work in. Um, and again, Sidewinder users is going to look very, very familiar to your regular pulley inputs. It's just we've added a, a bunch more. And essentially, we've tried to come up with pretty much every end disk design that we've ever seen out there. Um, so we've added, um, there's about 20 different uh, uh, basic end disk type designs, and each one of those is completely um, customizable. So where you, what fillet radiuses you want to have, or if you've got a, um, a weld on one side or both, well, uh, both sides, all of those sorts of details we can just put in parametrically, which is absolutely fantastic because you're no longer having to, to draw this up from, from scratch or, say, bringing a CAD drawing into ANSYS and then mesh it in ANSYS, and then when you want to change something, you have to rebring that in and remesh everything and go through the whole process. Here you can literally just change that input, hit run, and it, it automatically creates everything and, and meshes it up. Um, likewise, all of the catalog information, for example, for the, um, for the locking devices, we've got all the XT hubs, B-Lock, the B-Lock catalog, ring fetter, Bicon, Taz, uh, the MAV, Ecolock, kind of all the, the, the big main prominent manufacturers and, and pretty much, like for example, this BLOX 115. All of the correct geometry and catalog information and pressures, that's all automatically built into to PAX itself. So with that, our third tab up here is our meshing, which Again, Sidewinder does all the meshing for you automatically, but it also gives you complete control. So we can still change the meshing if we want in any of these specific fillets. Um, if we want to change our, our meshing of our shaft, it's got some customs in here that we can have a coarse, a, a normal, or a fine mesh, those sorts of things. I'm going to show you that in a second. And then we've got our results tab. And here again, we've really tried to make it easy for the end user to kind of have all the information in one place. So this one screen here is pretty powerful. It's got all of our, our general output, all of our results for our locking devices, the bending moments across the locking devices, those sorts of things, all of our shaft um, stresses and uh, results, our end disk um, information, as well as our rim um, and uh, the, the seam and circumferential weld if we've got stiffeners and then you can even put in a, f a few more if there's some other areas of the design that you want to customize put in there. And what's really nice about this is I can literally say okay if I want to look at um, my end disk say fillet number three or fillet number two let's look at the yield ratio. If I literally just double click on that it brings me up to that point um, and the yield ratio on my fillet radius number two. And of course, I can can really look at anything I want. Say I want to look at uh, the maximum von Mises stress. So this is the maximum von Mises stress in the the whole kind of uh, assembly area here. Or if I just wanted to look at the shaft, or if I just wanted to look at one of the end discs or the rim or whatever specific part I wanted to look at, I can go ahead and do that. Um, if I wanted to look at that as um, let's say uh, the Goodman ratio as a contour plot. 
boom, right there, it's all automatically got that. So really we can look at Goodman yield ratio, displacements, uh, von Mises stress, max alternating axial radial and hoop stresses, and kind of show whatever we want it to, to show, however we want to show that. So it's, it's really quite slick there. Likewise, we can go into the 3D geometry, and I'll just color this, turn on our mesh, and there's our, our 3D pulley um, with our belt and our wrap angle. I can go ahead and cut a clip plane of that if I want. Um, I can go ahead and show, let's, let's look at, say, the maximum von Mises stress. We'll turn off the mesh, and there's the full 3D results for the specific pulley. Um, by default, it basically just puts a cut plane where the belt's at, but I can completely control um, that cut plane wherever I want, can control where it starts, where it ends, that sort of thing. So I can look at anything I want there. Um, if I want to animate these results, I can literally just click the animate button. Um, let's go ahead and uh, let's leave contours on. And oops. And I'll go ahead and just put play, click play there. You can see we're now uh, real time animating the output contours um, of the maximum von Mises stress in this pulley as it goes around each revolution. So it's pretty, pretty slick and so easy to use. Um, if I want to look at, say, displacement, turn that off. Here's our displacement plot. Turn off our zero position on our displacement of our of our pulley in and in disk. Uh, likewise, of course, we've got all of the the detailed reports. Uh, here's our bending moment. Um, the difference between these would be what's going into our locking device, our shaft torque, all of our locking device pressures. And most importantly, we wanted to have a really good high quality uh, report outputs. So again, just like the regular Sidewinder, you can literally click a button and PAX will generate a full detailed report for you. That's what it's doing right now. And we'll open that up. So it just gave us a nice little cover picture there. But there's a whole, you know, everything. This was all automatically generated in, in Sidewinder. In introductory section, um, a summary of all of our results. Um, all of our pulley geometry details, and here's our summary. Um, all of the primary stresses, be it in the shaft, in the end disc, in the um, the fillets, in the seams, in the circumferential weld, all summarized for us. Um, information on the locking device, uh, the finite element mesh that was used uh, for this. Uh, there's a whole section on the actual analysis method, the yield safety factor, what the fatigue safety factor is. <coughs> excuse me, all of this built right into the report itself. Um, what the gravity loads were, the boundary conditions, and then of course an entire section just listing. Here's what all of your results are, um, what uh, Fourier, the, the Fourier series that were used, and then on each individual part, for example, here's the shaft summary, our maximum von Mises stress, our alternating von Mises stress, yield ratio, Goodman ratio, um, same thing at all of the fillet radiuses, in our end discs, in our welds, um, boom, output for you automatically. Um, so again, it's an incredibly powerful tool. So we can take this design, we can simply modify it and, and rerun it at, at, say, a different, um, different fillet radius. In fact, if we go ahead and I'm just going to jump in here and open a file, and this happens to just be a pulley that's a driven pulley on driven from both sides here. And I'll jump into packs and I just wanted to show this geometry here. Oops, sorry. Jump to the FEA. Just show in the geometry how easy this is to change things. So for example, if I wanted to change this radius from 40 millimeters to say 20 millimeters, I could just simply put that in there hit run and there we go we just change that dimension if I wanted to change a locking device I could change that if I wanted to change um, some fillet radiuses down here or shift uh, the center of this um, uh, geometry left or right I can simply change those offset uh, the center offset here I'll maybe make that 20 and that's basically going to just shift that to the right to the to the left and we've like I say pretty much have made this really really easy to use and really really flexible say I had a weld in here that um, 
Oh, maybe it went in nine millimeters, and I wanted to use a two millimeter radius there. And go ahead and put that in. It automatically puts in a notch for a uh, uh, end disc that would be just welded on the outside. So you'd put in your weld um, fillet right there, and then generally what you're going to use for uh, a, a notch criteria on the non-welded side. So those sorts of details are just you know, so easy to now do in packs. Let's switch that back to 20. Um, let me run that. And again, with with our meshing or our mesh generation itself, um, say I wanted to have a finer mesh in that area, I could simply change that from 8 to 16 elements, and now it's going to put 16 elements in there. If I wanted that mesh to go out farther, I could change that from 1.25 to 2, and that goes out farther. Um, uh, and, and this goes for pretty much all of the components, everything, all of the detailed um, areas that you really care about when you're doing pulley FEA. Uh, you can actually manually mesh it yourself. Um, for example, if I manually mesh that, I can smooth my FEA uh, analysis. I can reapply uh, these, this, this, whatever specifications I had there, re, re smooth it. Um, that's how it actually, the FEA uh, mesh started out. And uh, so you have c full, complete control over there, or just simply auto mesh it. Um, so we'll just go back to our defaults here. So this has got 4,000 elements in here. Uh, we'll run it in 64-bit mode with uh, uh, six cores. I come over here, I just hit run. Sorry, that went off the screen for you. And now we're actually running the analysis for this specific pulley with, uh, with 4,432 elements using six cores. And this is a, basically just a six-core i7 uh, Intel processor, nothing, you know, no supercomputer or anything like here. Um, it's about a $400 processor nowadays from Newegg. And there we go. Took a whopping 32 seconds to run that complete pulley analysis for us. And we ran the running tension case here. And so I can look at all of my stresses. Oh, I've got in the locking device, that seems to be the high stress area. Um, just look at the end disk area right there. Can look and see. All right, if I just look at my end disk, where the the maximum. Let's look at von Mises alternating stress. Oh, happens to actually be right up here where we kind of expect on that inside weld. So that would be an area that we'd want to uh, analyze and and kind of optimize. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, again, the next video we're going to get into a lot more of the details, but hopefully that. Um, gives you a basic understanding of, of what PAX is and, and how powerful it is. Uh, so thanks for your viewing. Check out our website or uh, go ahead and watch the next video.